game so changer. My question about that is the cultural barrier, right? Because I think a lot of people when they go for the first time specifically to China or they're thinking about it, they think, how am I going to communicate? How am I going to speak to them? What when you make a purchase, like what does that look like? And like, do you is it just like I mean, because I've been to a lot of trade shows here and you know, you're writing purchase orders right there with the suppliers. You can communicate with them, you can talk about pricing, you can talk about things. So um, what's what was your experience like your first time when you went over there with the cultural barriers, the language? language barriers, like the do's and the do nots? <laughs> that is such a good question, you know, because I was scared about that. I was like, I don't know, you know, and now I've been so many times. So it's like, I have a team in China now. And, you know, that's the other thing, meeting people that can help you and can be your boots on the ground, if you will, uh, forgive my military background and terminology there, but um, it makes all the difference. So right now, if it's taking you six to eight weeks to get a sample imagine when you have somebody in china there that can go to the supplier that can speak mandarin that can work for you and with you and they're sending you immediate pictures you don't have to necessarily get get it in person and you can make those changes on the fly it speeds everything up it changes everything and you'll meet tons of people um at canton fair that can do that for you you'll make so many great connections so speaking of the language barrier. How did I make all those great connections? Most people speak English. <laughs> so it's really great. Like all the suppliers, like even if the big boss, which, you know, if you learn advanced sourcing from me, you'll learn how to talk to the boss because in China, kings negotiate with kings. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we are bosses talking to bosses. That's the culture there. Um, so you don't just want to talk with the salesperson. The salesperson that you're talking to has no power over pricing. Mm. They cannot reduce your prices in most cases. Um, they can go talk to the boss. If they know they've got this much room and you're paying this much, right? They can lower your price a little bit, but you're never going to get, you know, like I've saved people $90,000 on one negotiation call because I'm talking to the boss and I know what my target prices are. I know what I need to do to scale. Right. So that's like the next level, right? Right now, don't worry about communication. It's going to be great. Every supplier either brings in sales reps that speak really pretty good English and um, and there's translators on the floor that you can take with you. Um, it, but we never needed them in Mexico. Yes. So, um, you know, as um, I don't know if we mentioned it, I co-founded the only multi-category trade show in Latin America because people are wanting to get out of China and start to source in Latin America. In Mexico, it's harder. There's not as many people who speak English, but we had translators walking the floor at our trade show. And so, you know, we try to get a little bit, you know, past the initial language barrier. And then you just call over a translator, like help us out, you know, and then we got through it just fine. But in China, especially at Canton Fair, it's such a massive event with, it's the largest influx of Westerners to China twice a year. So it's really, there's a lot of Westerners there, you know, it's, it's pretty normal. Um, you're going to find English all over the place. Awesome. That's really good to know because I think that's a lot of what stops people. It's not always the financial investment. It's really like, how do I navigate this? How do I go to China if I've never been there? How do I go to China if I don't read or speak the language? And you can't expect everyone to speak English on your behalf. I mean, you're going into their culture, right? And so I love hearing you say that. And I, of course, that is a selfish question as well, because I have never been to China. I do want to go. I just, those are the things that are that are on my mind to scare me more than anything else. But I also haven't had that experience that you've had of um, when I was creating my first private label product and I didn't go there, but I reached out to multiple suppliers and then the conversations that we were able to have there and the different pictures and the different things that they sent back to me. So we didn't even have to do that, wait for a sample and get it here. I mean, eventually, I did, but the pictures and everything were very initial and we could say, no, change this, do this. Um, but I love, again, another tips that you're giving here is Kings negotiating with Kings and how you really present yourself as your business owner makes a difference in the prices and the people that you get to talk to. It's like, okay, I'm the owner, founder, um, boss, CEO, then they recognize that language of saying, okay, this is the person that's in charge and this is who we get to speak with. So I really appreciate those tips.